we've cracked out the army camo once again to kind of see if it maybe gives us some more good luck. Last week's hunt went really well with the 194 Blacktail and a number of other pretty nice trophies, and of course that one was meant to focus mainly on Whitetail. Now we're out here on Logger's Point today with a bit of a hybrid hunt for still looking for a 200 Whitetail, but also continuing to hunt for a competition, so we've entered a couple of competitions for species that we don't yet have a trophy for, and hopefully we can achieve one or both of our goals today. Now unfortunately, there is no good Mule Deer competition running today. I actually forget what the current one is, but I think it was one that was maybe like the highest average of your first four or something along those lines where it's just not really feasible to uh, do that in a hunt like this. I don't know how that was an intestine shot, but that's kind of the drawback sometimes hunting with a longbow. It can be a bit difficult to really place your shots well when it's a rush shot such as that. That can often be the result, but you'll probably go down there and go down on the beach. And in the meantime, we can maybe hang around and call some other stuff in. Well, fittingly, what we've called in is another mule deer buck, kind of similar size but a little bit bigger, and a much nicer view of the sunrise back there, but he's kind of coming in at a weird angle. So what I've done a lot with the longbow as I'm trying to get more harvest is go for kind of neck shots. I don't know how that wasn't a neck shot, but at least it got into the lungs. So at the very least, what we'll be able to do is track this guy down. By the time we recover him, the intestine hit one should be down. And then we should be able to kind of get caught back up and continue forward. So hopefully that's all it takes to kind of get warmed up with a longboat. Normally those neck shots tend to land, but at least in this case it got a lung. And I still don't know, and unfortunately, not like Call the Wild where we can see where the bullet actually kind of traveled. We'll never know how on earth we ended up with intestines on that other one, but what I do know is... For one, it seems like there's something down there, just a whitetail does, so we're not going to worry about that. Once we can go and claim this other buck, we'll be kind of back on track and not having to worry about trailing something else while also still calling in another animal. The one thing we might be able to do is, like, if it says Shore Blade, we can maybe get an idea. Or maybe in Trophy Shot mode, because I really want to know how that was intestines. Shoulder Blade Liver, I guess, could make sense, because we were above it. If it was kind of like top of the shoulder blade and top of the liver, it, it could be reasonable, I guess. 142 is not a bad buck, and I don't see any evidence of an arrow, so we'll just be happy it was liver. That was a shot that would bring him down a little more quickly. And because there are some kind of smaller game species over here by the center tower, I think we're going to give that area a shot, at least in terms of competitions. And I mean, big whitetail are often shot here as well. I've got to say, so far, this hunt just feels a little bit weird to me. Like, the locations of animals and stuff are just in much different areas than I would expect. And this is not like... Uh, I'll, t I'll say it's not an established fact, it's just kind of an observation. It seems like there are kind of different types of spawns you'll get, where, you know, often when you start to hunt on Logger's Point, you'll get a mule deer buck run down in this area, but on this hunt, we had pheasants calling not too far up ahead of that, and that's not a normal thing. And we had to move a bit away from the center tower to get a white tail to ground here. Now, I wouldn't say that necessarily is like a, a red flag of it just being a... a really different spawn, but it just seems like animals are not where we'd expect them to be, so I'm curious to see kind of what we're going to encounter the rest of the way. This feels like one that is less likely to happen, and by the way, we are actually entered in a pheasant comp, but it's basically, I, I think I had it confused with the mule deer comp earlier, it's the first four that you shoot the highest average score, which means you kind of have to be picky with what you see, and so far it's been a bunch of rather small ones, so Hopefully, I think we're going to continue north. We can start to see some better ones somewhere out here. This, unfortunately, is so predictable. I mean, to hit a max white white doe drag and this be the result, I feel like it happens far more times than not, but it always seems like the one track that you don't follow is just naturally going to be that, you know, monster non-typical or, or the 200 typical or whatever it may be. So we continue to track them and continue to see not that impressive bug with a high weight, but if there is one silver lining, we don't have to track him. 
Next shots are starting to actually land out in a 104 from a max weight estimate track in an area where there were a number of pheasants calling. Actually, I think there was one up in here that we may go see if we can find. And just hog and other stuff that kind of make it to where he's less likely to call. But we're tracking him for absolutely forever, but at least we got him. And at least we can kind of move on to hopefully something a bit better. Well, I can't say it's better, but this buck ended up running directly under the tree stand that we had just left. And I mean, if anything else, it is at least antlered. We've had a bit of a struggle finding much of anything during this hunt. I did go up and look for that pheasant and the weight didn't exactly look promising. So at least there's another buck in this area. And well, again, it's hard to just leave a buck grunt, even if it is one that is an area you just left. I kind of assumed it couldn't have been that big if it didn't spook from us leaving. But we've always got to go and look. I always have such high hopes going into a hunt where I intend to target pheasants. The rare pheasants in Classic are so good looking and I can just never end up finding one. I don't think we hit that guy. Gonna need a follow up just to bring him down. But yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, the uh, competition that we're entered in for pheasants at the moment is the highest average out of your first four. and. This pheasant had a decent estimate, currently there's actually only one entry, however it's not a competition that's over in a couple of hours. There's still a full day remaining, so I don't expect to get four and actually stay in the top uh, three to get a medal, but I mean, maybe there's a chance if we continue to find them. I basically wanted to come down into an area where we'd likely find pheasants. The plan was to kind of wrap around and end in an area where we may see bobcats. It just always seems to go this way. We're just about to hit the two hour mark, and we finally have a decent buck, a 140 to 165. And I think actually in the interest of making sure that he goes down, we'll switch to buckshot and take him with the camo over under shotgun, maybe. He sees us laying here with his army camo and I'm kind of shocked. Go ahead and drop him so that he doesn't end up taking off. That was not that close for him to end up seeing us, but I mean, that's essentially two hours spent on my map in multiplayer and you guys have seen the title and thumbnail already obviously uh, we have one thing left to get today and it was of course on Kyla's map I just don't even know what to say I'm out here on Kyla's map literally editing a video and I'm trying to just walk to a tree stand like location and place a stand and then just sit there and edit the first grunt after walking quite some distance was this guy who just bedded down in front of us a 120 to 140 albino whitetail. And what's the coolest thing about that is not only the fact that it's albino, it's our first albino whitetail buck since they redid the albino skins, I don't know, three years ago or so? And yet, like a hunt where I was intending to set up a stand and I actually was going to put it probably right there. So if he didn't grunt, there's a legitimate shot we would have spooked him, but now that he's bedded there, I don't know what to do. We have the longbow. I mean, we can kind of scoot in and try to get him that way, I guess. I mean, he is right there, 17 meters away, and I, I don't know what to do. The sunlight that I can see, in terms of thinking about a trophy shot, is not really in a good area. It's kind of on a hill. So it almost... I don't know, it's a, it's a tough risk to take, but it almost could make sense to hit him with a longbow and try to let him run a bit, or if we drop him, there's sunlight to work with. I can't believe I'm thinking about a trophy shot before actually shooting the animal, but it's such a rare thing, like I said, it's been years since I've seen one, so I say we try to get a shot into the lungs if we don't get an insta-drop, We'll hope that he ends up in a good area. I I really hate to shoot him sleeping, but it just kind of is what it is. Never moved. Never moved. Is he even? No, he's not even dead. What? Is it straight spine? Uh. I. I've never seen this. The sunlight's not bad. That's the one positive. I'm just gonna casually screenshot that because that's something I'll likely never have the opportunity to do again. Accidental 
weird shot causing? It has to be spine. That's the only explanation. I'm gonna just wait it out and see if he goes down, because I don't want multiple arrows in him if there doesn't have to be. So he did actually expire. I guess that was the spine shot. That would mean, apparently, I've never spine shot a sleeping animal before. That's what happened. Spine 2, a 122.7 score. Definitely going to tax that. Um, I think I have like 15 EM left, so that's going to be a good usage of what is our last EM tax till we get some more. And we'll go into the trophy shot mode and, you know, I'm rather pleased with the decision to shoot him here. Because it turns out the sunlight is definitely usable. I wish we didn't have that spine shot, shot situation, but I, I don't know. I didn't want to hit him in the head. That's why I kept it as high as I did. And it ended up working out in the end. I think I'm about as happy with this trophy shot as I've been with any ever. Not only the fact that we're wearing the army camo, and it's nice that the smaller brim of this hat doesn't shade the character's face as much, but just the fact that the sun hits the animal well, the arrow, if there's only one arrow, I'm actually happy that we didn't take another shot and make that look a little weirder. It's just a nice looking deer, and we're not going to put a filter, just the, the natural light is definitely the way to go. That's just unreal. And again, you know, we just, I know it's not the army outfit, but I literally, you know, bought that last week and wanted to use it and get some trophy shots with it. We've got some pretty good ones now in a 194 blacktail and an albino whitetail buck. If that's not an accurate depiction of just the way the classic goes, two hours spent today out here trying to find anything, whether it was like a decent whitetail or one of the competition species, and really not being able to find anything, versus I don't even know how long I was in that game where we got the albino whitetail while attempting to edit, but that's happened time and time again in classic, whether it was the two 400 scoring elk we got in a tree stand or one of the big non-typicals when I would just sit in a stand and like do homework back when I was in college or anything like that stuff like that would continue to happen and that albino whitetail is yet another example of that but anyway that is officially now going to do it for this video so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time